Hey, this is Mike Durr, the Kingwood Mortgage Guy. And listen, I wanted to go over this information. It just seemed like the right thing to do. Um, we believe that this is the start of prime time for refinancing. And with what's out there on the horizon and with the appreciation that we've received over the last four and a half, almost five years, uh, we think it's a good time to look at this opportunity and so what I wanted to do is I wanted to go through it. So it's why this may be the best time to refinance. And we believe that the timing is right. So let's uh, move on to the next one. Here's what we're going to cover. Uh, why is this a good time to refinance? Uh, what are the benefits of refinancing if you aren't aware of that? When is it not a good time to refinance? There are times when it's not a good idea smart reasons to refinance, and examples of when each of these might be helpful. So um, I've got an example at the end, and um, really, uh, again, I'm not going to cover everything there is to know about refinancing, but I'm going to cover some of the important parts and, and things that I believe are why you might want to look and see if refinancing at this time is something that's worth doing and it never hurts to just run the numbers so that's what we're going to be doing uh, again this is Mike Durr a Kingwood Mortgage Guy uh, this is my information slide uh, if you've been on this webinar before you know this but uh, that's our office number of course I've got an email there where you can reach me there Kingwood Mortgage Guy is our website and uh, love to hear from you so uh, just get through that one real quick so why is this a good time to refinance? Well, uh, first thing you look at, I've done a calendar over there, but, but let me just go through the talking points here. The low rates we've been accustomed to, they appear to be going up. And I don't know if they're going to be going up, but it, the prognosticators, the gurus, the bond market people, they seem to indicate, along with uh, the perception that our economy is getting better when the economy gets better interest rates tend to go up so this could be one of the last chances to reap the benefits of these historical low rates now <clears throat> if they go up and I don't know that for sure they may not go up a lot they may go up a little and uh, but they could go up a lot if they don't go up a lot but they go up a little it's still a good time if they're going up at all and then the other thing that could happen is that they could go down and if they go down well then obviously it's not a good time to refinance we'd wait until they get down to where we think they are the lowest but it's tricky to call that and anybody that can call when the lowest point is uh, you need to call me I want to talk to you the other thing that's going on and why I think the timing so good is that home values particularly in Texas have been going up for the last four and a half years maybe five years and I know that they started in 2013 when we kind of came out of a, a buyer's market and we moved into a seller's market. And what we have seen is in a couple years in the Houston market, 10% over 10% appreciation in the local marketplace. Now, I'll tell you, Houston got hurt because of the price of oil and the oil economy has been depressed for the last couple years and I believe that the areas in San Antonio and Austin for sure, San Marcos, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, pretty much everywhere else where the economy is not so strongly supported by oil uh, have consistently had growth that's been remarkable and the values that have gone up it, it's dramatic. I mean it's like something that I haven't seen in our time and, and we from being from Texas, we hear about this kind of appreciation on the West Coast or on the East Coast, but rarely in Texas. So it's pretty unique, and, and I think it's kind of special, and it adds into why this is such a good time. <clears throat> the thing we're going to talk about, too, is the best value of our house is determined by an appraiser using comps, and they usually use, or they like to use comps from the last three months, or they'll go out six months if they're having trouble finding them. And the reason for this particular slide is when is the busiest time of the year for the home market? Well, uh, January, February, and March are the slower months. And then 
maybe April starts warming up a little bit, May, June, July, August, maybe even you can count September, but May, June, July, and August are the months when most houses during the year get sold. That means that there are a lot of comps out there. There are a lot of people that have been doing business. It also tends to be when the price of the homes tends to go up because everybody anticipates that it's going to be a busy time. <laughs> and then you see September starts cooling a little bit, and then October, November, December. December may be an exception because there are a lot of people transitioning then, but I don't think anybody would argue with me, particularly if you're in any of the cold states, that these months tend to be a little slower but it's because the weather's bad. But in Texas, not so much. It just slows down just a little bit. Why is that important? Well, here's the point. If appraisers want to use the values from recent sales, most of the recent sales are going to be coming in this period right here, this May, June, July, August. Uh, th that's when the bulk of the sales happen. So if you're starting to refinance in September, then they're going to look back over this period to see what the values were of the homes that are similar like yours, similar and like yours. So the chance for you to have the number of comps that are going to support a higher value are there. And having a higher value when you refinance is never a bad thing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a higher value. Keep in mind that this information does not go to the tax authorities. It's really a mortgage thing. So that's why it could be a good time. And uh, let's move on to the next slide. <clears throat> so what are the benefits of refinancing? Well, it boils real easily down to pay less interest or lower your payment or shorten your term or consolidate debt, thus lowering your payments. And then with sometimes you can actually take cash out of your house. You can do home improvements. Here's a big one. You can pay for college, your children or yours if you're going to college or Maybe if you have student loan debt, you can whack that student loan debt. And, I mean, I've heard it uh, referred to by, I think it was Dave Ramsey, is that sometimes student loan debt, it almost becomes like a family member. I mean, you just anticipate that it's going to be there for your whole life. Uh, tax benefits. Now, I'm not hyping the fact that you would get higher tax benefits or deductions because I think it's a false argument, but it's true. I mean, you, you're paying more interest on a usually a larger amount. So that's one of the reasons that a cash out refinance could be a valuable thing. And then uh, here's a crazy reason that some people do it. They have a flawed escrow account. And when you have a flawed escrow account, I've referred to this in my escrow whammy. If you want to make a note of that, if you do a search on YouTube for the escrow whammy, you'll understand what I'm talking about by a flawed escrow account. Sometimes the escrows are uh, messed up, and, and in some cases they're going to always be messed up until uh, you resolve them sometimes yourself. So anyway, bottom line is refinancing can be a fantastic thing if it's right, the right timing for you. If you're going to be in your house for long enough to reap the benefits of that, and um, anyway, we'll go on to the next slide. So when is it not a good time to refinance? How about no, 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 we're not going to do that. Well, uh, one of the things is if you're raising the interest rate, it may not be a good idea. I mean, you've got a good interest rate right now. Don't want to make it higher. I mean, you don't want to pay more interest when increasing your monthly payment. Sometimes, <coughs> excuse me, sometimes when you refinance, you're increasing your monthly payment. Now, the, if you're getting cash out, that's understandable because you're going to be using that money for something that is going to pay you back. It could be a debt consolidation, which you actually are lowering your total monthly outgo, but you're just raising your mortgage cost. And you're doing that, you get a tax deductibility of it, and of course you're wiping the slate clean from any debt you might have. When extending the term, this is generally not a great idea if you're at a 15-year term or you've got you paid 10 years down on your mortgage and you go back to a 30-year mortgage. It, it, some people do it. It's not necessarily a, a, a great financial move, but sometimes it's an economic move. Sometimes you can, by doing that, you can lower your payments, which would help you but it's not recommended. Going from a fixed to an adjustable rate, you generally want to go the other way. You want to go from an adjustable rate to a fixed rate. It just gives you a little more security. And then 
the big one is refinancing when you're going to be moving soon. There, there's no reason, uh, very few reasons that I can think of when you'd want to refinance, particularly if you anticipate moving within the next 12 to 15 months, 12 to 18 months, because the, any savings that you might have accumulated in the monthly would not have enough time to pay for the refinance, so you'd end up losing money. So that would be a time that we would recommend not to do that. Smart reasons to refinance. Well, when rates are changing, you can make a case for refinancing whichever way they're going. If they're going to be going lower, you know, if we anticipate that rates are going to go lower, then you might want to wait and refinance then. If rates are going higher, we might want to do it now in anticipation of the rates being higher later on. So it could that that's a good case that you can make. Uh, if here's a good one your credit scores have risen. Maybe we got you into an FHA loan originally because the credit scores were lower <coughs> or your situation was a little different and we needed to go the FHA route. Well, FHA has some long-term negative characteristics that if you could go into a conventional loan, particularly if you've had some appreciation in your house, your credits got better, a conventional refinance may be a good thing for you. That could be a very smart move. You qualify for a better rate because your credit score is better now. Anytime you can reduce, reduce your term, it's a win. I mean, you pay a lot less interest, or, or even if you pay a small, you get a, a, a small discount on the rate, if you shorten that term, the number of payments that you're going to save up, it adds up into the tens and twenties and fifties and seventies of thousands of dollars. So it's a huge benefit when you reduce that term, if you can afford it. Not everybody can. If you can get out of an adjustable rate, that's a win. That's a smart reason to refinance. And then another one is to get rid of mortgage insurance. And that's what I was kind of talking about on FHA. The reason we like to get out of FHA loans is because that mortgage insurance stays on that loan forever. It never goes away. And so if you can refinance into a conventional loan, it's a good thing. So hopefully that is uh, some of the really smart reasons. Here are some of the refinance bonuses that a lot of people don't know about or don't talk about. When you do a refinance, you're going to be able to skip at least one mortgage payment, and many times, most of the time, you'll skip two payments. So let's just say that your mortgage payment is $1,500 a month, and let's say it's, it's currently late August, so we're going to refinance and we're going to close in September. Well, you won't pay a September mortgage payment, and you won't pay an October mortgage payment. So the next mortgage payment you would make would be well, September, October, you'd make a November 1st payment. And of course, <clears throat> this being August, you made your August payment. So you skip $3,000 that you don't have to hold, you know, to pay out over the course of this time. And then, then it gets a little bit better is that you get the, if you escrowed, assuming uh, we assume you escrowed, if you escrowed, then you're going to get the money that's sitting in your escrow account back, particularly for the taxes and some parts of the homeowner's insurance that you get back because you've closed out that loan. Now, the new mortgage is going to have an escrow account if you want one, or maybe you don't need one anymore. Maybe you don't want one. So if you don't put that money back in escrow again, then what you can do is you can save it for the taxes that are going to be due in December or January, whenever you choose to pay them. When you don't escrow, that says that, that tells the mortgage company that you're willing to pay for those yourself every year and to pay for your insurance yourself every year. You're not paying those in your mortgage. Now, most people tend to pay them in the escrow, but it's still nice getting that nice, at this time of year, it will be a pretty juicy check, three, four thousand dollars. And what I say is that the difference in the money that you get back from not making your mortgage payments a couple months and the money that you get back from escrow is a, a windfall. Now, it, I, I got to start I say this. Is it real? Well, not really, because you're going to be paying interest up to the time you refinance and you're going to be paying prepaid interest on the other loan. So you're really not getting a discount. You're just getting a break. It's getting a chance to skip a payment. And, and so it's it's not like you're saving money then, but you get money from those two things. Uh, when you add up those two things, it can add up to, well, five, six thousand dollars in the combination of the two, which will many times pay for the whole cost of not only your refinance, 
from your lender and from your title company, but also pay a substantial part of the money that's going into the new escrow account if you choose to go that way. So that's what I call the refinance bonuses. Here's an example of an actual refinance that I did, and I thought it was one of the ones that is, I mean, it, it stands out as one that I would remember. I'm going to, in this person's, I'm going to say their name is KP. Uh, she bought in 2013, December 2013. The rate at that time on this particular mortgage was 4.5%. This is the actual thing. Purchase price was $328,000. <clears> she did an 80-15-5, which is a combo loan. If you don't know what a combo loan is, call me. I'll tell you all about it. Uh, the payment on the first mortgage was thirteen twenty nine seventy nine. dollars and the payment on the second mortgage was four twenty one ninety three. So the total principal and interest, really, that's all I really think is worthy of talking about. I don't care about the taxes and insurance because they're going to they're going to be what they're going to be. But you add those two together, it was seventeen fifty one seventy two. Now this is an example of how much the property appreciated in June of two thousand fifteen. So that was barely eighteen months. I mean, it was barely eighteen months the property value had increased to $400,000, really. Rates have dropped to 3.75. We did an 80% loan to value, paid off the first and the second, and now she has a new loan with no mortgage insurance, with no second lien, and her new principal and interest payment is $1,435.66. No second mortgage. New total principal and interest, $1,435.66. So that was a savings of... $316.06 a month after 18 months of buying a property. That adds up to $3,792.72 annually. So would you refinance if you could save that much? Did the mortgage cost her? She paid back the amount it cost her for the mortgage within the first year, and everything after that's been profit. And she still lives in that property. So uh, I can tell you that that was a big win for her. Now, are these numbers typical? Was that an unusual situation? That was in Houston. It was down in the more popular areas, I guess, around. It wasn't in the Heights, but it was uh, just outside the loop on 610. And But you never know what's going to be. I mean, it, sometimes you just need to run the numbers. So my encouragement to you today is if you are thinking that your property might have appreciated or that your credit has gotten better, or if there are other things that might make you wonder if it would be a good time to refinance, I don't want you to wonder anymore. I want you to call me, and I want you to call me at any of these ways to contact me. 281-348-9899 uh, is the best way. And or go to my Kingwood Mortgage Guys site. Uh, love to answer any questions. There's no obligation. We're going to make sure, and I promise you, I won't recommend that it's a good idea to refinance unless it's a good idea, okay? Uh, I don't need your business to, to hurt you. I want to help you, and that, that's what the role is that I play. So uh, I, think I think that that, that is it. it. I, appreciate I appreciate you taking the time to watch this information, and I look forward to hearing from you. So talk to you soon. This is Mike Durr, the Kingwood Mortgage Guy, signing out.